Hi everyone. So today I thought I would introduce something different to my channel and I wanna call it buy or bust. So basically what I plan on doing is I'm just gonna go through trend mood, look at releases I'm interested in or that have caught my eye and I'm gonna speak about whether I wanna buy them or bust them. Wow, that was really aggressive. I have to tone it down. So I know different influencers have different versions of this video. I know Smoky Glow, I love her, has like Yas or Pass. Yas or Pass? Yas or Pass? I don't know, but she does it and I I so enjoy watching those. I, I don't know why. Half of these things I'm not even really gonna buy because I'm a college student, not working currently. Thank you, pandemic. So I'm not making any money, so I can't really buy anything, which is disappointing. So I have my laptop here with me on the side. I have Pongo here with me on the side and he's just, he's gonna help me go through these releases. So I've kind of pulled up Trend Mood's Instagram and I'm looking at the products I wanna talk about. So I've just kind of pulled up Trend Mood's Instagram here on my laptop screen thing. So I've pulled up Trend Mood's Instagram here and I'm just gonna kind of give you my thoughts on the products I see. Did anyone else hear my wrist click? It's not, it's not doing it again. Okay, good, this is good. Anyways, let's get started. I feel like, I feel like I have so much makeup on, I can't even like properly move my face. Like, I feel like I have lipstick on my teeth. Hopefully not. Okay, let's go. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the Makeup Revolution and Makeup by Tammy palette. So I follow Makeup by Tammy on Instagram and her eye looks constantly inspire me. She's so creative with everything she does. And the fact that she's come out with a colorful palette is really exciting. And I like, I, I kind of want it, I'm not gonna lie. The way I kind of want to approach this is if I had the money, would I buy it? You know, I'm not actually, half of these things I'm not gonna go out and buy. I'm a little too afraid of commitment for that, but it's, so instead, I'm just gonna window shop, essentially. So Makeup by Tammy's not just coming out with an eyeshadow palette. It looks like there's a trio of glosses, a palette, and two face palettes as well. So the eyeshadow palette looks super pretty. It's filled with jewel tones and, oh, there's a matte yellow in there that is really catching my eye. As a woman with darker skin, I definitely trust influencers who also have darker skin tones to get the pigmentation in these shadows, bronzers, highlighters, blushes correct. It's not that other influencers can't possibly get it correct, it's just that I think if you have a darker skin tone, it's easier for you to understand what looks good on a darker skin tone. So I own two eyeshadow palettes from Makeup Revolution. I own um, one of their regular ones, like just within the brand, and then I own one of their influencer collabs. And I know that their influencer collab was definitely the better palette. The pigmentation was there, none of the shades were too... None of the shades were terribly not pigmented. What I mean to say was the shades were good and they perform well and they're not patchy or anything like that. But in their actual palette that they released from their own brand with no influencer collaboration, the pigmentation definitely wasn't as good. So I think when it comes to Makeup Revolution, I would prefer to buy a collab with an influencer because I think they would just make sure that the quality is there. But yeah, these pictures look so pretty. So I think matte shadows are definitely more difficult to get right than shimmer shadows. The shimmers look great in the pictures, in the swatches I see on Trend Mood. The mattes also look great, but I don't know, I'm skeptical about that. That's the one thing I would watch out for, I think, with this palette. Overall, if I had the money, I would buy the eyeshadow palette. It's 25 bucks, by the way, I forgot to. Sonia. So the face palettes also look really nice to me, just because the bronzer and contour shades are so deep. And I don't really see bronzers or contour shades that are deep enough for people who are my skin tone or even darker than me. I have one bronzer from Wet n Wild and it's basically the same shade as my skin tone. I can build it up with a brush and it kind of looks like there's some semblance of color there and it adds a little bit of dimension, but I would prefer to not have to layer it up so much. It's a good thing that it looks natural on the skin, but I'm still out there hunting for a good bronzer that's darker than my skin tone. The blushes look super pretty as well. They're kind of burnt orangey and I have been looking for an orange blush forever. I love orange blushes. I love the way that they look on skin, specifically darker skin. I just think it looks so gorgeous. I really, 
I've been really into cream products lately and I really like cream blushes. I have I have a Stila convertible color like cream blush palette that I got from Marshalls. It's probably definitely expired. So I'm looking for a new one and I really want to get the Fenty cream blush in daiquiri dip. It's like this bright blood orange color and it looks so good. I want to scoop it up and eat it with a spoon. Is that weird? Let's not be ashamed to tell people we want to eat our makeup. I don't know. Looking at these bronzers, it looks like if you have a deeper skin tone, it would be a great option for you. Hopefully the formula is good. I can't wait till reviews come out. Oh, okay. So the trio of glosses is actually just two nude glosses and a lip liner. And from what I can see here, they're kind of sheer nude glosses instead of like thick lip lacquers, which is something that I definitely prefer. I don't like thick, very pigmented glosses because I feel like they're so sticky on the lips. I like something that's a little thinner and I just feel like lip lacquers are a little too like sticky on the lips and I, I, eh, I just don't like them. I prefer a smoother, thinner gloss. Also, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really do full glam like this. I'll just swipe on some mascara, a little bit of blush, and a lip gloss. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I just prefer a sheer gloss. That's just me. So the next thing that really caught my eye on Trend Mood was Milani's Fruit Fetish Collection. It looks very cute and colorful and summery, and I am all about it. So it's a set of colorful tinted lip balms, some setting sprays, and a couple of eyeliners. So all the all the fruit all the fruit combinations they've chosen look super like summery. So they have mango coconut, strawberry lemonade, dragon fruit peach, blueberry acai. Is that how you say it? I think that's how you say it. I hope that's how you say it. That's how I've been saying it forever. So I don't know. I'm a little confused about how they would tint some of these. The blueberry one obviously would be kind of purpley. I would guess that the dragon fruit one would be kind of hot pink, something like that. Strawberry lemonade has pink packaging, so I would assume it's kind of a light, it's kind of a lighter pink. But three of the tubes have, three of the tubes are yellow in color, so I'd be interested to see what the color of the tint would be inside the tube. I like the normal Milani Make It Last setting spray. I think it's really good. It just melts makeup into the skin really nicely. It's only like 10 bucks. It's a good setting spray. But my issue with these is the only difference between these setting sprays and the normal Make It Last setting sprays appears to be the added fragrance, like the added summery fragrance. So the, fr so the fragrances for the setting sprays would be mango coconut, dragon fruit peach, and kiwi watermelon. Uh, uh, not to be that person, but I have a sensitive nose. And if the fragrance were to like linger too long on my face, I'm afraid that I would get a headache. Sometimes that happens. So I, um, I think that the setting sprays would be a bust for me. I, I just, I wouldn't want to spend my money on that, but I could get the normal make it last setting spray and not have to deal with the scent all day long. But if you want your face to smell like fruit, like, go for it. If it's not going to bother you, sure, why not? And <laughs> the eyeliners, just from what I can see, Trend Mood swatches, they don't look all that promising. They look really thin and not pigmented, and the colors are pretty, I guess, but... But I guess if I really wanted neon -y liners, I could just get the new ABH ones or the Suva Hydra liners, something like that. I don't know, upon second glance... The packaging looks a little kiddish, like a little juvenile. I don't really think I mind that terribly. Oh my god, my upper lashes keep getting stuck to my lower lashes. And I don't know what to do about it. I feel like I have to like hold my eyes open. Overall, I think that the only thing I'd really want to get from this collection are the lip balms. The rest I'm not very interested in. Oh, surprise, surprise, ColourPop has a new release. Said no one ever, no one's surprised, really. They're coming out with a tie-dye collection. Interesting. You know, I have noticed that in quarantine, people have been really into tie-dyeing their stuff. I know there are videos of people all over TikTok using bleach to tie-dye sweatshirts and things like that. I feel so weird having a TikTok 
because I'm definitely too old to have a TikTok. I'm 20. I feel like that's so, that's way too old to have a TikTok. I also, I just deleted it off my phone though because it was taking up way too much of my time. TikTok is literal black magic. I don't, I don't know how they do it. I don't know what kind of algorithm they're using. I literally hated TikTok for the first 15 minutes I was using it. I was just swiping through video after video after video of boring stuff. And I would come across a couple funny things, give them a like, a heart or whatever. And then suddenly, and suddenly they kept showing up in my feed and I caught myself scrolling for hours and hours. No, that's an exaggeration. Maybe not hours. Maybe like, one and a half hours at a time before I would look up and notice that time had passed. It's, it's black magic, I'm telling you. So anyway, back to the task at hand. These palettes are not my personal cup of tea. A lot of the shades, I don't want to say that they look pastel-y because they're not really like pastel palettes. It's supposed to look the way tie-dye does on a white t-shirt, but they just, they look really light in the pan. I think if I were to go see it in person, but if I were to go see it like on a display, I'm sure it would be different. I think the only one that I would really wear is probably the Miss Bliss palette. It's more of the peachy toned one, but I already have peachy eyeshadows that I wear and that I love. So I don't really see any point to getting another peachy toned palette. Mm, so I think the colors are pretty, but they're not for me. So this palette is a bust. The highlighters, they look pretty. It just could be the photo lighting too, but they look a little light. I know that taking photos of highlighters is a little difficult because the tone can be deceiving when the flash is on or if you're taking it. The tone in real life might not look exactly like what you see online. And I think that might be the case with the pinker highlighter in this collection. It looks like it might work for someone my skin tone or lighter, but I don't think it would work for anyone who's darker than me. So I think I'm gonna pass on those. However, the glitter gel and the liners look super cute. Again, I don't wanna say they're pastel because they're not. I just, I look at the glitter gel and I, I, I wanna put it on my eyes. It looks so glittery. And there are a couple different shades for the eyeliners. There's a stark white, there's a light yellow, there's an orange, there's a green, a blue, and a purple. They all look super pretty. I think if I were to get one of the liners, it would definitely be the purple one. It's kind of like a, the purple one is kind of a lilac-y shade, maybe a little darker than that. I think it's really cute and I love purple in the eyes. Wearing purple eyeliner is the easiest way to bring out the brown in my eyes. And if you have brown eyes in general, it's the easiest way to bring out brown in your eyes. So I think the glitter gel, yes, I would buy that. The purple, the purple gel liner, yes, I would buy that. The rest, I just don't see myself using. Okay, so when I was first getting into makeup, I think Jaclyn Hill was definitely the first beauty guru. No. No, it was Michelle Phan. No, it was Michelle Phan. Michelle Phan was the first beauty guru I started watching. But after that, Jaclyn Hill for sure. And she had recommended in a video getting a stark white liner and putting it in your lower waterline to make your eyes pop. And I got one on her recommendation, Jaclyn Hill, who's at the opposite end of the skin tone spectrum from me. And I put on a stark white eyeliner and I looked absolutely, I looked ridiculous. Like I, I looked at myself in the mirror and I remember wondering, why did I do this? Why did I think this is gonna be a good idea? Nevertheless, we've learned our lesson. And if I want a liner that opens up my eye, I'm gonna go for kind of a beige liner instead of a stark, just straight up white liner. I find that it looks a lot more natural and it just, it looks better. Okay, so next up, I would like to talk about the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet Palette. In the picture on Trend Mood, it looks, it looks really pretty. It looks really pretty. But I, I don't know. There's no matte. There don't appear to be any matte darker shades that I could use in my transition comfortably. The peachy neutrals that are sort of towards the left end of the palette, they look like they won't work for me. They even look like they'd be a little too light just to sit on my lid. 
I think the color Lucid, it's kind of like the glowy, like mint green in the middle. I don't know if it's actually mint green. I think in this photo, it looks a little out of place, but if I were to look at it in the store, if I were to go to Sephora and swatch it, I think it could look really cool because it doesn't look like it's an actual mint green shadow. It looks holographic. That's really exciting. That could be really cool. And I, I really, I like the darker purple shades in the palette. Those look super pretty. So having looked at it, I have a couple of thoughts. I guess I just don't really understand how this is a naked palette at all. The OG naked palettes have always been a little more neutral and kind of natural, and it doesn't look like you're wearing makeup makeup when you wear them. But recently, their new releases within the naked line, like the Naked Honey, the Naked Heat, Naked Ultraviolet, they're not naked like that. They're just not natural colors that people can wear. Well, I think an argument can be made for the Naked Honey if you have really yellow undertones. But for Naked Heat and Ultraviolet, I just, that's not going to look natural on most people's eyes. So I don't understand why it's being called a naked palette. I don't know. I guess that's a little petty. It just doesn't really make that much sense to me. The fact that it's called a naked palette is actually kind of deterring me <laughs> from wanting it. It's reducing my wanting for the palette. I, I honestly wish Urban Decay would just be done with the whole naked line. I think if Urban Decay could have come out with a whole UV line and made it its own entity instead of just another naked palette, I think that could have drawn a lot more customers in. I think that could have been something that really surprised people, especially to have come from Urban Decay. I guess Urban Decay isn't really talked about that much anymore because none of their releases really wow or surprise people. The last palette that I really hear people raving about was the Born to Run palette. I'm sure that palette is really great, but from what I know about it and from what I've seen of it, it just, it looks like a safe palette. Also, I just don't think the palette matches the theme of ultraviolet in my head. There are some great purple shimmers in there and that color lucid that I really want to, I really want to swatch that. But the peachy neutrals just kind of throw things off for me. So there is kind of... So the first five colors in the palette are all like peach. And I, I just don't get it. It doesn't really match. These shades look like they should be in the Naked Heat palette instead of an ultraviolet palette. When I think ultraviolet, I think like bright, glowing, flashing, like neon-y, kind of like that. And the first five shades in the palette are peach. If Urban Decay's team approached me and said, Sonia, what would you change about the palette? I would tell them, take out the peachy neutrals, add something new, do something different. I think that holographic pinks, holographic purples, holographic greens, whites, things like that could have been really cool in this palette. And I would also, I would also add in some transition shades for people who are darker in skin tone and can't put a bright peach in the crease and have it look natural or good in any capacity. I think Urban Decay did what they usually do and they played it safe. This could have been something really, really cool. I think Ultraviolet, had they taken a bit more of a risk and added some crazy shades in there, they really could have drawn a lot more people in. They could have gotten people, they could have gotten people talking about Urban Decay again. Wow, I feel like that was harsh. I feel super mean now. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the Wishful Skin Clean Genie Cleansing Butter. So if you don't know, Wishful Skin is Huda Beauty's skincare brand. So the other product I know from them is their Yoglow mask. It's like some kind of enzyme thing. It looks like a chemical exfoliant. Holy crap. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's $35. I just feel like... That's so much money for a cleansing balm. Uh, to be fair, it does have skincare ingredients in it. It's got green tea extract, cherry blossom extract, malachite stone, things that are going to clean out your pores while nourishing your skin. I still think $35 is cheap. Cheap? Steep. $35 is steep. It's not cheap. Wishful skin just kind of seems a little gimmicky to me. Huda has gorgeous skin, but at the same time, she also has fillers. She has access to great skincare, expensive skincare. I definitely, personally, I get all my skincare from Walmart. Recently, I bought 
a vitamin C suspension and lactic acid from The Ordinary, and that's the fanciest skincare I've... Anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent, but the whole point of me saying that was that skincare doesn't have to be that expensive to be good, to be effective. Currently, to cleanse my face, I use the double cleansing method, which sounds super fancy when I say it, but all it is is like I slather on some Pond's cold cream, take it off with a cotton pad, and wash my face with a gel cleanser, and my face is clean. You don't have to spend $35 on this product to get your face clean every night. If you're looking for specific skincare ingredients in a cleansing balm or something like that, this could be an option for you. But at the same time, I feel like there are options out there with similar skincare ingredients that'll give you similar results that are less than $35. This is kind of a side note, but I, I just think it's kind of, I think it's kind of ironic, kind of funny that who does makeup line? All her stuff is so heavily fragranced, heavily pigmented, just heavy on the skin. I just don't think there's any way that with her skincare line, you can achieve her skin, knowing what she has access to. I also wouldn't be surprised if this product was heavily fragranced. I just think there's no need for fragrance in skincare. You're putting it on to nourish your skin, not to smell good. I just don't really see the point. That's just me personally, though. I will say that the packaging, it kind of looks like this soft touch rubber, and I want to, like, bite it. Not in a weird way, it just looks like I want to bite it, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's the only really positive thing I have to say about this release, oh my god. So overall, I think this cleansing balm is kind of a bust for me. I'm not gonna buy it. So lastly, but not leastly, I don't think that's how that's said. Anyway, <laughs> Trend Mood is teasing a couple releases from Dragon Beauty. I honestly, this is kind of bad, but I kind of forgot that Dragon Beauty was a thing. I just feel like there's been so many gaps between releases, and it looks like she's coming out with a lot of stuff soon. So Trend Mood is kind of heavily implying that she's coming out with liquid lipsticks, a new color corrector, um, an eyeliner, and possibly an eyeshadow palette as well. I learned from Jackie Ina, whose foundation is always flawless, that I can use kind of a red tone concealer around my mouth if I have darkness in that area, which I do, and that does work, but I don't use a specific, like, red tone color corrector for any darkness on my face. I know if you have darkness under the eyes, that can really help. I know Nikita specifically says in a tutorial of hers that she uses it to cover up a five o'clock shadow. I remember that her red color corrector was kind of marketed as a universal tone, like anyone of any kind of skin tone can use this. So the color corrector is kind of a lilac color, I know just from basic color theory that purple can be used to neutralize any sallowness in the skin, any yellowness. That's like fine and well and good, but this purple is really pale. I don't know that it would be possible for her to market this the way she marketed her red color corrector. It's, it's just, it's too pale a color. There's no way this would work on every single skin tone. Personally, I think it would be best for me because I don't really use color correctors, and if I did use color correctors, that purple wouldn't work for me. I'm gonna give this a bust right away. I'm sure she'll do a good job with them. I'm sure they'll be really pigmented and nice, but I, I just don't like liquid lipsticks personally. I can't stand feeling dry and crumbly. I Look, I wanna feel greasy and oily and moisturized at all times. And I'm sure that's translating on my face right now. So Trenmu doesn't have any pictures of the eyeliner or eyeshadow palette. I would bet that if Nikita's coming out with a liner, it would be a liquid liner. If it is a liquid liner, I have no doubt that she'll do a great job with the formulation and the brush and the pigmentation. I think she could do a really good job with that. So for that one, I would say, I would think about it. I ha I'd have to see reviews first. And the eyeshadow palette, I just think if it's anything like her universal face palettes, I'm gonna have to pass on that one too. I just remember her saying, oh, the palette's universal, you can use it on every single skin tone. And I remember watching a video of her doing a dark skin model's makeup, and it just, it didn't look universal. It looked ashy. But obviously it's a little too soon for speculation because we don't have any pictures. We don't know what the palette's like. So I think that's it for my first buy or bust. Wow. That was riveting. I can't wait to do another one. Oh my god. So with that, I think I'm going to sign off for today. 
I hope everyone has a lovely day. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.